the Indian police detained students in New Delhi over the screening of a BBC documentary titled India, the Modi Question, reliving PM Narendra Modi's role in the deadly Gujarat sectarian riots in 2002. Over 1,000 people died in the riots. Most of them were Muslims. The chief minister of the state at that time was Modi. The Indian government used emergency powers to block the documentary's broadcast and banned its sharing on social media as well. Twitter and YouTube complied with the request and removed links to the BBC documentary. This is a very delicate issue. Uh, you know, Modi's uh, alleged role in the Gujarat riots. Um, many in India, certainly on, on the political level, but I think more broadly across the public, many people really don't want to talk about it. Um, and especially after the Supreme Court uh, ruled that uh, you know, it was basically time to move on and there was no truth to the allegations that uh, Modi uh, didn't do enough to stop the riots. So I think that for on, on the one hand, there's this, this sense of well, why are we having to hear about this again? There's no reason for us to hear about this. It's a done deal. Um, I would also argue that um, there is a colonial legacy uh, factor at play here. You know, we're talking about the BBC, right? The, 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 you know, the, the media arm of the British government, the BBC coming in and uh, reopening old wounds that uh, never should have been reopened and, you know, trying to stir up trouble and things like that. I think it's a very powerful sentiment uh, among many in India. So I think that's another reason for this very angry reaction. But finally, and maybe this gets to the heart of the matter, uh, Modi is a very popular figure uh, in India. He's an extremely popular popular figure. And I think for, you know, for the, for the political class or for the government and the ruling party, it's important to limit any type of material content, especially in the media, that brings attention to things that get at the issues that have impacted his image deleteriously um, over the years. Well, I mean, we, we certainly know that uh, press freedoms and broadly speaking, uh, freedom of speech have taken major hits uh, in recent years in India. And, and certainly any type of content that offers criticism of Modi or of the government, um, you know, that's that's certainly liable to be uh, censored. Those that do it uh, have been ha harassed, threatened, arrested. And so this really just plays right into that broader uh, theme for sure. But, you know, for me, What's, what's striking about this type of thing is that if the government doesn't want people watching this, this documentary, the government does not want attention being brought to this documentary, well, you're going to have the opposite of effect if you're making global news headlines because of all your efforts to prevent this documentary from being shown. So I would argue that uh, you know, the New Delhi is really shooting itself in the foot in the sense that it's making more and more people interested in the documentary, including many, many people who may otherwise not have wanted to watch it because there's not that much new in it. Just because of all this, this all of the reactions that the Indian government is taking on such a draconian levels to make it difficult to watch the documentary. Agenda driven, biased, and uh, so they decided uh, that if there is a documentary which is directly targeting the sitting uh, Prime Minister of India, um, and the approach was believed to be not correct, uh, so they decided to bring it down to take action against the documentary, and that was done by the government of India. In functioning democracy, this is nothing new. I mean, BBC is a UK based. Uh, uh, agency, correct me if I'm wrong, 1915, 1916 probably was the first, uh, you know, when the UK had banned a film. And then I think there's a there's a history of so many films and documentaries that UK has, uh, you know, by itself banned in their country. You know, as a journalist, if I were to think that, you know, l let me proceed with a documentary against, say, Pakistan Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif, would I not factor in that, you know, there is a apex court judgment on him, that he was not found of any guilty. And yet, if I, you know, intend to go ahead, the agenda is clear, clearly there to be seen, and probably that is why this was done. See, it's not censorship; it's it's just a, probably a tool of the uh, functioning democracy, which countries like even UK, as I told you, uh, have been exercising for uh, time immemorial. There is no ban on the documentary. What has been done is uh, by using the emergency powers given in the Information Technology Act. The IT ministry has uh, asked uh, YouTube and Twitter to 
take down the documentary from online platforms and also to restrict its uh, circulation by way of tweets. So many people who tweeted about this documentary or a link to the documentary have been taken down. But if I have this documentary and I download, I download it or I got a download from somewhere and I watch it, I am committing no offense as of uh, uh, today's law. So a ban is not there. Still, kind of a ban is there. Uh, Jawaharlal Nehru University students uh, planned uh, public viewing. And uh, the university administration went on to get the electricity disconnected for that time so that they can't watch. So things are uh, like this are happening. So it's in a way an unofficial ban. It's not a ban. What's happening today in India uh, and uh, which we are seeing especially in the universities where public screenings are taking place is not that people want to watch the movie they want to show that they are watching the movie and they are in a manner challenging the authorities to take action against them otherwise uh, you know in this digitized world uh, people watch on their personal devices sitting in a corner nobody knows what one is watching it's kind of an uprising you can't really say it's an uprising but it's in a manner of speaking an uprising against the uh, thought which uh, intends to ban a documentary which powers that we don't like uh, my position is that anything that anyone is making uh, uh, writing or uh, publishing should be allowed to reach the viewers or readers and then they, they decide if they don't like it they don't watch it this controversy has actually helped this uh, documentary lots of people would never have gone to uh, see this so would never have gone to bbc platforms uh, are now really curious and they are asking for downloads and clips or links to get this documentary and they are watching this documentary does not harm Prime Minister Modi or Bharti Janata Party's prospects in their core.